All right. I've got Grant Schneider today. Thanks for joining me today, Grant. Hey, good to be here. Grant is the number one VA lender in the country for our company at Movement Mortgage. Grant is a market leader in Colorado Springs and uh, really excited for you to share your expertise and your knowledge with everyone today. Yeah, excited to be here. You know, the VA home loan, uh, it's not just a loan product, right? It's a benefit that's earned. And so I think that it's so important to, to touch on that subject today, something I'm super passionate about. I too am super passionate about serving veterans. I can't say that I've done it at the scale that you do it at, but uh, man, it's, uh, it's an amazing benefit to anybody that's active duty military or a veteran. And they are making sacrifices every single day that I have never made. I do have family members that have served in the military, but I myself have never served. And so I just, I can't give back enough to the people that are, you know, laying it on the line for us and protecting our freedoms every day. So thanks for everything that you do. Thank you to all the military out there. Anybody that's watching that has served or is actively serving, my heart goes out to you. I love you. Thank you. Um, well, let's jump right in. You know, one of the uh, one of the the myths I think is that VA loans are far more difficult to secure, and it's more difficult to qualify when compared to conventional guidelines. Walk me into that. Yeah, certainly one of the more common myths I come across, and uh, you know, it's it's certainly gotten better over the years. You know, I started originating here in Colorado Springs about 16 years ago. And about 10 years ago, I really dedicated my business and focus on helping veterans. And so that's when I kind of pivoted and really focused on helping veterans doing VA loans. And that makes up about 90% of my business today. And one of the reasons I did that is because there were so many misconceptions. And um, I have to be honest, even when I first started, you know, I worked for a company where we would almost talk veterans out of using their VA home loan benefit and going into like an FHA loan because we just didn't understand the product, you know, and that was just unacceptable. Once I, you know, started learning more and more about the product, I realized, man, I'm doing such a disservice there. Um, and I still see it happen today for people who just have never done a VA loan before, who believe all these myths about it being, you know, too much red tape. It takes too long to do, um, you know, all the reasons, all the excuses as to why they shouldn't use their VA home loan. And when you really kind of dive into the program and you start looking at all the, the benefits of it, you realize that you're doing the veteran an, an injustice. And um, that was, I think, an opportunity I saw where I could become the guy in town that the VA loan guy, right, who didn't see it as a hassle or a pain to go through, right? And so, you know, that was a great kind of um, launch point for my career. It really took off because at the time, they weren't a very popular loan product. Now, like I said, it has gotten a lot better. It does seem to be something that's on everyone's radar now, but um, there's still a lot of people doing it wrong, right? And a lot of uh, myths out there that that need to be busted. Yeah, just an incredible loan program. It is absolutely one of my favorites. I mean, who wouldn't want to take advantage of up to 100% financing, not pay any mortgage insurance, and, you know, depending on the, the disability status of the military person, uh, even just the smallest percentage disability results in no VA funding fee. And there's all sorts of complexities to whether it's your first use or subsequent use. Is it a refinance or a purchase? But, you know, if you have questions about that, reach out to myself, reach out to Grant. We'll happy, be happy to dive further into that. Um, why should real estate agents consider offers more seriously when it's a VA buyer? I, I know firsthand in my career, I've had VA buyers that I'm representing and, and agents kind of overlook these buyers, they kind of set them aside, create a second stack of offers, and they kind of get blackballed. And, and I've never understood why. Um, I just think people don't know what they don't know. So tell me about why our real estate community should be considering these buyers very seriously. Yeah, well, kind of also going back to the question before, you know, the VA loan is one of the easiest to qualify for. Right. So, you know, they uh, the program has some of the lowest credit score requirements of other programs. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a loan that doesn't focus as much on debt to income ratio, but residual income. There's flexibility when it comes to, um, you know, uh, concessions from the seller, paying off debts, things like that. And so I think that 
what they look at is they see on this pre-approval letter that we issue that they're not putting any money down, right? So they immediately think this must be a weak buyer, right? And that's not the case. Let's not punish them for a benefit that they've earned, you know? And let's, you know, pause for a second and go, are we really going to deny those who serve our country the opportunity to purchase a home because the benefit that they've earned allows 100% financing? That just seems kind of silly. So when you look at it, there's so many more things that can kind of go wrong on a conventional loan that they're putting on a pedestal above these VA loans because they're more difficult to qualify for. They're more stringent on a few things when it comes to underwriting and verifying assets and things like that. And so the VA home loan being one of the easier mortgages to obtain, the bar is a little bit lower, you know, that that's a strong point in the first place. And there's a lot of flexibility there. You know, one of the benefits of the VA home loan is that unlike some of the other programs where it's really black and white, the guideline, there's a lot more gray area that that leaves it up to the underwriter to really make the best decision uh, for the veteran, you know? And so it's in those gray areas that we can get things done with a VA home loan that we can't do on an FHA and conventional loan. So having that flexibility, um, gosh, if they're not putting any money down, then guess what that takes off the table? Issues with running into asset issues, right? I mean, that's one of the biggest things, as you know, on conventional loans and FHA is documenting where's the money coming from, you know? Yep. Well, if we're not bringing any to closing, that check that off. Don't work care about it, right? My personal request to the real estate community is look out for these veterans. Look out for these military people. This is a tremendous benefit for them. It's one of the best benefits of their entire package as an active duty military person or veteran. And just like Grant and I want to serve these people by closing their mortgage for them, I would like all of you to see it in your heart that you try and get them into the home, you know, make that the roof over their head, fight to make that deal work for the military person, if and when it makes sense. You know, I do want it to be an objective competition where you're looking apples to apples at the offers on the table. And if there is someone that seems to be a stronger buyer that is paying more for the home, I'm not going to fault any seller for taking a higher sales price on their home. You know, how many times do we all sell a home in our life? I'm never going to hold that against somebody for just trying to capitalize on top dollar. Uh, we sell homes so infrequently. But if it's neck and neck, if all things considered are the same, let's let's serve our military people, you know? Yeah, no, I totally agree. And, you know, in the markets, I, I lend all over the country. And so I do find that when I'm lending in a heavy VA market, okay, Colorado Springs, um, Kyleen, Texas, Fayetteville, North Carolina, they're they're used to receiving VA offers. The loan officers, because they're doing more of them in that area, are better at them, right? A lot of times, though, where it's really tough is when you're not, when a veteran's buying outside of these heavy VA markets that aren't as used to the VA, whose loan officers who attempt them aren't trained up on them, right? And and unfortunately, it's it's those experiences where a loan officer blows up a deal at the end of the day because they didn't really know what they were doing, right? Those those multiply, right? And then that gets stuck in the head of these real estate agents and therefore makes it more difficult for the next uh, veteran to be able to, to purchase, right? And get that offer accepted. So that's where I think, you know, we need to all get better. And I think it is getting better. The VA loan program has come to the forefront. It's a pretty hot program right now. People are really taking notice as they should. And uh, that's just going to help veterans moving forward. Yep. I think there are some misconceptions around the VA appraisal process. Uh, one of them being that it's far more stringent on the scrutiny of the property. And so uh, it seems like the real estate community particularly uh, believes that it's easy street if it's a conventional loan and a conventional appraisal is going to be like fast to the finish line, whereas a VA appraisal is going to be slow and, uh, you know, moving through molasses um, and also that the scrutiny put on the property and the collateral is far more stringent. And so it's more likely that you know, hiccups or surprises or roadblocks are going to occur. What do, you, what do you say to that? Yeah. So in addition of just assuming that you have a weak credit profile, no money down, you've got this VA loan in front of you, 
on the pre-approval, that has got to be the next thing in line that these um, real estate agents are advising their clients on is saying that this VA appraisal process is going to be, it's going to be brutal. We want to avoid it like the plague. Right. And, you know, I, I just don't quite understand. It comes back to but just not the, not proper education on this. Right. And so first thing first, these, the appraiser doing your VA home loan appraisal is the same guy that's doing the FHA appraisal and the conventional appraisal in your city. Same yeah. guy or gal. Okay. They just happen to have gotten a certification and they're on the, the VA approved list. Okay. Yeah. So to think that, I think some people think they like come in in like a special, you know, like hazmat suit. Right. <laughs> and they're going to, and they're there just to like crush the value. And they're like, they're government employees. And like, no, like they're the same people in your city that are doing all the other appraisals. So same people. Okay. Uh, VA doesn't have a different algorithm of how you calculate a home value, you know, so that they always come in low, you know, in fact, there's a feature of the VA home loan product called Tidewater. Why they call it Tidewater? I have, I have never figured that out, but it's called Tidewater. And it's a heads up that the appraiser is struggling to come up with the value of the home. And it gives you 48 hours for the buying agent and selling agent to get together and to provide right the, the comps that justified the list price. You should be able to do that. If, if you're confident in what you're listing the home at, I assume that agent did the research. They have comps readily available. They know the house better than anyone, hopefully, and that market, and they can present them on a silver platter. You got 48 hours to prove your case, right? Yeah. Whereas when was the last time that happened on FHA or conventional appraisals? It doesn't, right? You just get in your inbox a low appraisal that you have nothing to do with, you know? And so the Tidewater process alone is a huge advantage. It says, hey, before I go ahead and kill this deal with a low appraisal, let's work together and let's see if we can come up to value, right? So right. that's a huge feature of, of the appraisal uh, process. Now, you know, we, get, we, we gotta look at both sides of the coin here too. So the VA appraisal does have minimum property requirements, right? So does FHA and they're really not, much different, right? So you can't you can't weigh a FHA appraisal any better than a VA, right? Same person doing it, similar minimum property requirements. So those yep. are a wash. Conventional, you're going to be a little bit looser on the condition of the property, okay? A little bit, but you, you know, in neither case are you going to have a, a home that needs a total rehab go on any kind of conforming financing, right? Whether it be VA, FHA, conventional. So, you know, I just think that the the VA appraisal process. Um, is actually superior to um, the other programs because of that Tidewater. And I'll tell you what, when things were really going gangbusters over the last couple of years, you know, a lot of times that appraisal process, say it takes too long. You know, they have 10 business days or depending on the region, that time frame is different, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what my fastest appraisal was over the last two years. It was VA because they actually had a deadline to hit, right? Yep. They had an imposed deadline. Whereas, yep. you know, we'd be ordering appraisals in the peak uh, especially during COVID and everything, all the craziness going on on a conventional. And you'd be lucky, you know, sometimes if it was out in the middle of nowhere, it'd take a month or two to get an appraisal back. That doesn't yeah. happen with VA. They've got the yeah. network built. They require that turnaround time. And so where it went for maybe an appraisal that was one that took a little bit longer to get back, it was the quickest over the last two years, you know? And yeah. so that yeah. whole process, I think, takes a lot more heat than it deserves. In fact, it required, it should, you know, get some praise because it gives you that opportunity. Um, you know, so even if you get that Tidewater notification, um, you work with the appraiser and the appraisal still comes in low, you have one other option, okay? And you can you can take it up with the VA. The buyer has to request it and they can say, hey, this is why I'm comfortable paying this value. Um, it goes up to the, the underwriter at the, the VA appraisal underwriter at the regional loan center and bam, they can come back and they can overturn it as well. So we're conventional on FHA, the appraisal comes in, there's nothing you really can do there's some options with VA. And so that's a huge benefit when it comes to that. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of things I want to point out here. The, the turnaround time is public facing, right? We can find this on public facing websites. We can share this with our home buyer clients. We can share this with the real estate community and everybody can see plain as day in each respective area across the United States, what the service level guarantees are for turnaround time. And it is not tied to the respective mortgage lender. There is nobody that can lay claim to getting VA appraisals faster than another lender. It, the standard is set regardless of who the lender is, right? Yes. Equal playing field. Equal right? playing field.
Yep, that's correct. And then that Tidewater notice, I mean, I would love to have something like the Tidewater notice across the board in the mortgage industry, no matter what the loan program is, you know, USDA, FHA, conventional, jumbo, you name it. If we could be given a heads up by that outside third party unbiased appraiser saying, I'm doing the data research right now. I'm not finding these comps. Can you please help? And they're extending their hands and asking for help. Like that's amazing, right? Because we both know that there are a lot of real estate agents that uh, are unwilling to meet the appraiser at the property. They're unsure that it's okay to provide comps to an appraiser, you know, meet them at the property or leave it on the kitchen table um, and let them know when they're setting the appointment that they've left some comps because they're fearful of, uh, stepping on the toes of the appraiser. They don't want to upset the appraiser. They don't want them to come away feeling like they've done their job. And my experience, I mean, nine, nine out of 10 appraisers would love the help from the real estate community, lead the horse to water. Their goal is to make deals work. Their goal is to do the analysis and research the property using the sales price that's on the purchase and sale agreement that is provided to them. And then they're trying to, they're fighting tooth and nail to support that value. If you are forthcoming with data that's going to help them do their research and help them do their job, doesn't it take away from the time commitment on each property that that appraiser is trying to appraise, they are now able to do more appraisal reports in less time. And that's ultimately how that appraiser pays their bills. That's how they support their family is by doing more appraisals. Wouldn't any business owner wanna do more business in less time and make more money? It just makes sense. And this Tidewater notice is an opportunity to, to provide that guidance and uh, every appraiser would welcome that, I think. So yeah, for sure. The what are the maximum seller concessions on a VA loan? Yeah, so here's another example of a huge benefit over some of the other loan products out there, right? And so you've got um, so the the guideline is you can have four percent in seller concessions over and above normal closing costs. So this is where some lenders will struggle. They'll just use the four percent, right? Which really limits the total concession that can be used, right? And so it's actually 4% over normal closing costs. So you have your normal closing costs, not really a cap there, okay? And then the 4% over above that. So this is actually becoming more and more important now. We haven't really had the opportunity in the last couple of years to max out concessions. Are you kidding me? Like we yeah. could barely get any closing costs covered, let alone max concession. Yeah. Well, the market's changing a little bit right now, you know, and although... It's not wonderful for our veterans as, as home prices are still near their peaks, right? Rates have come up quite a bit. Housing affordability is a big issue that we're struggling with with our veteran home buyers right now. You got to understand they're on a fixed income, right? Only on their promotions, they get a little bump in pay. Their housing allowance they're given is based on rank, independent status, and it's set for the whole year. So when we see rates spike as quick as they have like this year, man, that puts them in a tough position. We all hope that at the beginning of next year, the VA will come out, they'll bump up the housing allowance accordingly. But we've seen some years where they, they kind of misstep and they don't bump it as much as they need to. And so it seems like sometimes our veterans are kind of playing from behind a lot when it comes to those allowances. So this is where this concession can be used and be extremely critical in helping our veterans still get into a home, okay? And how we do that is now that there's much more inventory on the market, Homes are staying on the market longer, okay? Um, less competition on offers. We can start requesting the seller to not only pay all closing costs, but to also contribute 4%, up to 4% towards things like debt reduction, right? Or maybe buying the rate down, things like that. Um, and so we actually are putting it in a plan when we pre-approve a borrower right now, we're having that conversation up front, okay? Because especially for our active service member population, they're not looking for their forever home. OK, they need shelter for their family for the next three years while they're stationed in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and then they're going somewhere else. Right. And so what we need to do is we don't need to find the perfect home. Then we can find a home that we can build a finance package around that makes the most sense for their budget. And that's a home that maybe was on the market for a little longer. They're willing to pay some concessions in the process of buying the house. 
We can make it so they come out of pocket. No, no money, right? Because the closing costs can get covered. And maybe we can cover a few of their liabilities, right? To help offset this affordability crisis that we're in, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is where a skilled loan officer that understands the VA product can really be doing proper service right now um, to the military is by structuring it appropriately to, to do what's best for the veteran at that um, and their family. And so, um, yeah, right now we are, we are full steam ahead with putting together these packages and communicating it with the realtor as well and saying, Hey, you know, they're not comfortable with where payments are at and the price point they need to be in. So we've already talked to them and they've got a debt we can pay off. That's $300 a month payment, you know, to $5,000 balance. If we can find a home where we can negotiate that to get paid off at closing, guess what? We're back in the game. They're comfortable with the payment and they're, and they're good to move forward, right? So great opportunity right now, which this has been not an opportunity uh, for a few years now, right? But it's, mm-hmm. it's in play right now, which is great. You mentioned normal closing costs being one of the facets to seller concessions that are allowed with VA lending. What is normal? Can you go a little bit deeper as to what the definition of normal closing costs are? Yeah. Is, so does it allow for any money going towards points or if someone chooses to pay a point or two, is that point or two a part of the 4% over and above normal closing costs? Yeah, no, it can go, it can go towards the point. Those are considered normal closing costs. And so it's a pretty gray, it doesn't really list a line item of what fees can fall in that bucket. Right. So this is this is back to where an underwriter has a little bit of leeway there. But um, yes, so the the points can be included in Um, they just the definition of that is that it has to be the true cost for the rate on that day. Right. Not that we're as lenders can charge over what the true cost is anyways. But, um, you know, that's probably verbiage from back in the old days before Dodd-Frank and things like that. So, yes, those can be included as well. So when you start looking at the sheer number of what you can get from a seller, it's pretty large and can make a pretty, pretty big dent into the equation. Yeah. I mean, the, the debt reduction that is allowed in the VA guidelines on a purchase, we're not talking about a cash out refinance on a home that an active duty military or veteran already owns, and they want to consolidate debts with a cash out refinance. That's not what we're talking about here. We are talking about a purchase of a new home and paying consumer debts off to bring that person's debt to income ratio down and bring it in line either for qualifying or just simply because it's going to help benefit the personal budget of those buyers, regardless of what the reason is, it is allowed in the guidelines. And because of the market circumstances now with a little bit of increased inventory and homes that are sitting, uh, there's, there's room for negotiations. And this is an opportunity for us to collaborate and work in tandem with our real estate community. We are on the same team. We want what they want. We want what the buyers want. All of the stars are aligned. We just need open lines of communication so that we can strategize together. That's really what it's all about. The separation is in the preparation. And some of this preparation includes conversations with the real estate agent so that we can go in with the best plan for that respective buyer to make that dream of home ownership happen, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The um, the market, you touched on this a little bit, but just tell me one more time, why is this market, why now is it really conducive to VA home buyers? Yeah. Well, let's look at it. You know, um, if you don't take a deep dive, you assume, hey, the last couple of years where rates were in the threes would be a lot better than a a market where the rates are in the fives and home prices are up. Right. And so, but if you dig down a little bit and you, you know, I, how many buyers I had that couldn't compete in the previous market, you know, because offers required you to go over asking price, guaranteed large appraisal gaps. Okay. And um, cover their own closing costs. And that's just not doable many, many times for many buyers. Gosh, not just veteran home buyers, but um, you know, in particular, you know, our veteran, our especially our active duty service members, they're not getting paid a whole lot of money, right? And so, having massive reserves to do that, but also, how silly would that be? It's a three-year home for you, and you're going to pay 50k over over the market value. 
like that's just a bad idea, right? So as good as the numbers, you know, the rates and payments and everything might have looked, probably not the best market, um, you know, especially as, you know, prices maybe start to plateau or, or correct a little bit. If you paid more than what it was worth a year ago, and then you're trying to sell in two years, you might be having a, a pretty tough time, right? So in this market, yes, payments are up higher, right? You might be paying three, four, five hundred dollars more a month, right? And so if we annualize that five hundred dollars a month over, you know, that's that's six thousand a year. You're in the home for three years. That's eighteen thousand dollars. That's still a heck of a lot cheaper than the fifty k you had to offer, you know, nine months ago, ten months ago, over asking to buy that house, right? Yep. It's spread over three three years. You didn't have to bring it all at once to closing. So, you know, the opportunity right now. It's great for our buyers. We have a lot of buyers that kind of had to stay on the bench, right? As the market kind of figured itself out, but now they're ready to go because um, the VA offer is getting accepted. It looks a lot better now, you know, for those sellers who are sitting on the market for over a month or two months. Um, they're not going to look at the VA offer like they did before when they had a stack of 10, right? And so um, right now, it's a great time for the, for the VA home buyer, especially if we can you know, structure a package together where we reduce and, and, and put some, uh, relieve some of the stress on their debt to income ratio. Absolutely. Absolutely. How have certain national VA lenders taken advantage of the military community? Well, you know, it, you know, it's a tough question. It's, I don't think there's any villains out there. I really don't, you know, and I think they mean well, some of the companies are so big, right? And they don't really have as much as they, they're a really good marketing company, but are they truly specialists in the program, right? Do they, uh, are the loan officers, you know, um, do, are they specialists in what they're doing? And also the overlays, right? So really the VA guidelines are, are pretty loose, right? In fact, people might not, might not know this, but there is actually no minimum credit score in the VA handbook right? There's not a minimum credit score. Now, lenders are going to have their own VA min minimum scores because they want to make sure the loan performs and people have proven their ability to, to pay debts on time. But some of these lenders have some pretty high overlays when it comes to FICO score. Um, they like to sprinkle in FHA verbiage, like debt ratio and things like that into the equation. And what they end up doing is they end up really watering down the VA benefit, right? The other thing that I see a lot as well is um, you know, using super low interest rates with the little asterisks with many points being charged, you know, they basically advertise the lowest rate on the rate sheet that costs three points to get, but you know, they're still advertising a rate in the fours today, you know, and, uh, it looks really good, especially to our first time home buyers that may not be as savvy. Right. right. So they're going to call them and then they find out that their closing costs are just outrageous. When you're thinking about, uh, um, you know, especially our, I keep going back to our active, active duty, uh, service members, and they're going to be in the house for three years, they need to be looking at the higher end of the rate sheet with lower costs because they're just not going to be in the home long enough if they don't intend on keeping as a rental later on. If their true goal is to be in the house for three years, stop chasing that lower rate. But unfortunately, these companies to, you know, as clickbait, use these low rates with heavy closing costs. And that's just the wrong product for, for most of our service members. So. Well, you were far more politically correct than uh, I'm going to be. I'm going to stick my neck out there and say there are certain companies that use words like veteran in their name. Um, that in and of itself is like calling all people that are members of this community. That's who they're marketing their services to, right? And as you mentioned, certain companies are really great marketers they have good sales funnel, uh, lead capture. They want their telephones to ring. They want people to fill out forms online to inquire about their loans so that they can turn those opportunities over to their salespeople. But there isn't always an expert on the other end. There isn't an expert uh, to really hold your hand and guide you to the finish line, teach and coach and collaborate with your agent. When we were talking about debt reduction and working to reduce debt to income ratio and things like that, this is really where the separation happens. And this is why military and veterans should be aligning themselves with expertise so that they can really get what is best for them and best for their families and not just get sucked into the clickbait, as you said, 
um, the, the advertisements of the, the ultra low rates, but then there's the fine print at the bottom. And many of us are just moving so quickly. Life is busy and full of interruptions and distractions. So many of us are not taking the time to read that fine print. You know, it's, it's been around for decades in the mortgage industry. If you just remove yourself a few steps, take a few steps back and think to yourself, if I'm a mortgage company and I'm gonna try and source as many sales opportunities as possible, when we go about marketing things like rates on a website, are we going to post rates that are mediocre? Are we going to post rates that are on the high end or are we going to post rates that are really low? What's going to translate to the most leads, the most inquiries? It, it's not rocket science. The right decision from a marketing perspective is to post ultra low rates so that people call and people inquire. And so this is happening in a, in a, at a really large scale all across the country because there are certain mortgage companies that are doing a phenomenal job with their marketing and their clickbait. And I just immediately think of the, the car sale where you know someone is uh, seeing an advertisement in the classified ads or something and they go and visit the car dealership and they're like, hey, I, I'm, I saw it on the su in the Sunday paper. I'm here to check out the fully loaded Honda Accord leather interior, premium sound, sunroof. You know, it, it looked like a great price for a car. Like, I want that car. Where's that car? And the immediate response from the car salesman is, oh, that car? It's it's gone. We sold that actually this past weekend. But since you drove all the way out here and, and you're here on the lot today, you know, what else can we get you into? That's the sales tactic from these companies. They're getting those inquiries coming in. And then when people get to peel back the curtains and see how outrageously expensive and how many points it's going to cost to get that rate, they're like, oh, well, th if that's not to your liking, like we've got all this other stuff while you're here, what else can we get you into? And it's just, I don't know, it doesn't sit right with me. It feels a little bit like sleazeball salespeople stuff, but to each their own, I guess, you know, you got to tip your cap to them to an extent and just say, you know, kudos on your marketing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Why, why do you think it's important that someone work with an experienced loan officer that truly has a depth of knowledge when it comes to VA lending and specifically movement mortgage. You and I both work here. Uh, many reasons why we choose to work here, but what makes movement mortgage different when it comes to VA lending and why does someone need to align with that expert? Yeah, well, I think, you know, it starts with the guidelines, right? And we do our best to not add any unnecessary overlays, we have very few, and we really want to underwrite the files, uh, you know, by the handbook. And so that's just doesn't water down the benefit they've earned. So that's that's number one. Our systems and processes, right? I mean, we're one of the top 10 VA um, origination companies in the country, okay? And so we've been there, done that. And so we have um, our underwriters are well-versed in the guidelines. Our loan officers are well-versed. And so just having those proper systems and processes in place really smooth out the process. I mean, we close our VA loans uh, on average in less than three weeks, you know, on average without even breaking a sweat. And so, um, you know, and the reason it's important to work with a loan officer that's done these before is they're going to have a little, a few tricks up their sleeve. You know, one, one perfect example, ordering their certificate of eligibility from the VA up front. You know, we'll pull credit, make sure the credit looks good, looks like it's a deal. And before we even reach out, you know, to issue the pre-approval letter, we're going to try to get that certificate of eligibility because you got to have it. And sometimes the veteran may think they bought a home with a different loan program, you know, not just being educated and maybe had a foreclosure. Maybe they still own that home. And you find out, man, you just don't have full entitlement. Let's that's something that typically would blow up a transaction later in the process. They wouldn't pull a certificate of eligibility to, you know, until they're a couple, three weeks into a, a contract. Not this is not necessary, right? It takes five minutes to order one, so just order it. It's free, and so um, you know, little things like that. You know, asking um, questions. You know, because childcare cost is something that goes against their debt to income ratio, which is unique from other loan programs. If the if the loan officer is not used to doing the program, they don't even know to ask. Well, guess what? I've got four kids. You've got kids. Childcare is expensive. 
thousand dollars a month in childcare can really sway a, a, a pre-approval. So do you want to find that out before the pre-approval is issued, or do you want to find it out three weeks later when the underwriter gets to it? Right. Yep. And so those are just a few, but there's quite a few little things about the program that an experienced loan officer knows to focus on up front, make sure that they're handing out a really solid pre-approval. Hey, how about the question, how long do you plan on staying in the military? Right. So if they're active duty and they have less than 12 months on their contract and um, they don't plan on, on re-enlisting, you got a little bit of a problem. You got an income problem. Right. But unfortunately, if those questions aren't asked up front, you know, right up front, then they're going to cause issues down the road. Right. And so you start getting, you know, you through the experience, you just know what to ask for up front, send out a, a solid pre-approval that you're not going to have to backtrack on later. Right. And um, these questions aren't being asked by other companies. I can, and the reason I know that is when we're competing against another company and they're pre-approving someone for much higher, I can tell they didn't ask if there was child support, if there was alimony payments, if there was child care debt, things like that. And I, I can, and you just know like, okay, fine, you can go that direction, but it's going to end up blowing up. Right. And so you see that all the time. So anyways, those are the reasons why if you're working with a company that, that does a lot of them, that has the systems and processes in place and a loan officer with the knowledge, a lot of the, the hiccups that they may have experienced in the past can be avoided, you know, and then, and, and have a, pro, a program that can still close just as quick as any other loan program out there. In fact, over the last couple of years, you could close them quicker because those appraisals were actually coming in in seven to 10 days, not three, four, five weeks. Yep. Yep. Can a military person own more than one property and have VA loans on both of those properties? You can. So, man, this touches on one of the the, the biggest myths out there. Um, you know, first, they, the the veterans they think they can only use it once, right? So, I'll be talking to a, an E three, E four, new into the into the military. You know, plans on having a long career at their first duty station, and out of their mouth will come, "Well, you know, I want to save my VA loan for my retirement home." Okay, and uh, it, because they think you can only use it once. Right. Some of them, some of these guys think that you lose the benefit after you're out of the military. It's only good while you're active duty. Not true. Right. You have it for the life for, for the rest of your life, as long as you don't get kicked out of the military. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, as far as having more than one, yes. And so I always explain it to um, our veterans like a credit card. OK. And so there's a county loan limit in each county across the country. And 95 percent of the or more of the counties have the same county loan limit. Only in some of the higher cost places, California, Hawaii, you know, you pick some of the metropolitans have higher limits just because you can't can't buy a home for under 600 grand on, on the island, right? So, um, but you've got this, this loan limit and that's your credit card limit, okay? And so if you bought a house for easy math, let's just say the limit was 700,000 and you bought a house for 350, then you have 350,000 remaining to buy another house down the road at your next duty station. If you kept the property at your current duty station, maybe as a rental or whatever. And so then if you sell one of those properties, it's like paying down the balance of that credit card. So as long as you manage that entitlement throughout your career through selling homes, you can even do a refinance, refinance out of the VA loan into maybe a conventional loan after you've had a property for a while, it's got a lot of equity in it now. Uh, maybe you're renting it out. You can do a one-time restoration. I'll let you do it once where you actually re um, receive your entitlement back through a refinance, okay? And so there's some tools to regain that and use it down the road. And so, um, so yes, not only can you use it as many times as you want, as long as you manage the credit, the, uh, the entitlement amount, but you can have more than one at a time. I love the credit card analogy. That's a good one. I'm going to steal that from you. Okay. <laughs> Um, what about a co-borrower on a VA loan that is not a spouse? Does the VA allow for this? Describe this in detail for me. You bet. So there's a couple of different, different routes to go here. So if the co-borrower is another veteran, right. And they, they intend on, you know, occupying the home. So, you know, two buddies are, you know, in the military and they say, Hey, let's go, let's go buy a house together. Right. Maybe two single soldiers, whatever. Um, you can do that. It's called a split entitlement loan. Okay. So you buy a $400,000 home, 200 gets charged to service member one, 200,000 gets charged to service member two. You can do that. Right. Um, now let's say that you want to buy a home um, with your girlfriend 
Okay. You're not married yet. Um, but maybe you need her income to help qualify, right? You can still do that. Okay. But the government, the VA is only going to guarantee half the loan amount. Okay. And their guarantee is 25% of the loan. So that's why mortgage companies are willing to do these 100% financing loans because we're in a equity position, uh, no different than if someone was putting 25% down on a conventional loan. We feel pretty good about that because the government's given us a 25% buffer. Since only one of the borrowers in this situation where, you know, service member is buying with the girlfriend and they're buying together is a veteran, then they're only going to insure half the loan. So at the end of the day, how the numbers work out, they would need to put 12 and a half percent down, right? And so still comparing that to conventional financing, there's no mortgage insurance, right? Still a great opportunity. Your rate's going to be better. Yep. The guidelines are still more laxed than the conventional, right? Yep. And so still a great opportunity to look at it. Yes, it takes one of the highest benefits of the VA benefit of no money down. It does take that off the table, but still comparing it to some other programs out there might still be a great re- uh, a great uh, solution. Appreciate your time, Grant. Thank you so much for setting it aside. I know you're a busy family guy and you uh, have a thriving business and you serve more VA, uh, VA clients than anyone in the country. So I really appreciate and value your time. Thank you for your friendship and I hope you have a great rest of your day. You bet, man. Thanks for having me.